welcome back to my channel subscribers it is so good to see you thank you for coming back every week if you are brand spanking new hi! welcome to my channel my name is born Dunji, and i talk about writing and books and sometimes i do tags when people tag me and stuff which i don't do very often so don't tag me <laughs> <laughs> Today, I am going to be answering a very important question. A question that was asked by Steve Partridge on his channel. You get this grand idea for something. And I think that before you dive in headlong, you need to ask yourself, why does this story need to be told? That reason could be a lot of things. Maybe the story is important for some reason. Maybe your idea is groundbreaking in areas of things like social justice or morality or something else you believe very strongly in. Maybe you really connect with the characters or you wanna make a statement about the human experience. Maybe you want to examine the consequences of something that relates to world building that maybe other things in the similar genre wouldn't necessarily have explored yet. Maybe the story really brightens your day and makes you excited about it. But before you start writing everything down, I think it's important to ask yourself, why does the story need to be told? Because that's going to be your driving factor when it comes to how you write, what you write, and what keeps you going on those days you really don't feel like writing. I'm gonna level with you guys. Writing isn't always hunky-dory, and sometimes it's really hard. And if you wanna put something out for publication, it has to go through a process of development not just initial drafting, but once it's drafted, that's just kind of the first hurdle. And it's not even the biggest. Editing is a slog. Don't forget to subscribe. If you don't know, I was born and raised in Uganda, and my current work in progress is a story that happens in the future in Uganda. It is a story of redemption. It is a story of adventure. It is a story of things that are possible in the future. This is the story that I am writing right now. I have five different points that I would like to share with you, so let's go ahead and tackle number one. After my family returned to Uganda from Canada. This was just after Idi Amin had been overthrown and the country was in turmoil. We were changing presidents like every week. Anything that had been built up since independence had been destroyed during those turbulent years. And part of the things that were destroyed were the libraries, which is incredibly unfortunate. And it meant that as children, we didn't have a place to go to borrow books. If your parents were not rich enough to buy books from abroad, which means you had to have abroad money, if you were unable to get books from abroad, then you basically didn't have anything to read. My parents were insistent on raising us up as readers, and we are voracious readers. Luckily enough, there was a missionary, a lady from England, who had children's books in her house. And every Saturday, she would open her home, and we would climb over the fence and go to her house to borrow books. And because we're such readers, we would drag my little brother, who could barely walk to go to her house so that we'd have enough books for us to read for that week. Those stories were great and provided a lot of entertainment for us. However, none of these stories were about us. They didn't eat the food we ate, they didn't play the games we played, they didn't walk the same streets, the culture was so different. There was nothing that looked like the things we were used to. They talked about summer and fall. Uganda doesn't really have seasons unless you're talking about the dry season and the rainy season. But all the others, like even though we had sort of a, a mental understanding of what was going on, there was no true connection with the characters that went deeper than just empathy for people's situations as they had adventures. My story is about Ugandan people. There are a number of other people included in this story, but it is primarily a story about Ugandans. It is written for the me who did not have a story about someone who looked like me and I'm not just talking about the color of my skin I'm talking about cultural practices I'm talking about the food that was eaten the kind of adventures that you could even have in the neighborhood which were many we got into a lot of scrapes with a bunch of my buddies growing up but essentially that is what I mean when I say that those lives just did not look like mine. And so I wanted to write a story for the me who did not have that. Uganda is beautiful. Name it, we have desert, we have snow-capped mountains, we have forests, we have savannas, we have rolling hills, we have flatlands. We've got the River Nile coursing through their lakes. Uganda is 
gorgeous. It is not just a myth created around sort of this pearl of Africa thing. Uganda is beautiful and mysterious and I wanted to write a story that lived there. I also remember the feeling of being taken to the village. My family, my tribe is not from Kampala. So during the holidays when we go to see my grandparents, we had to drive from the city to the village to go and see my grandparents. And from Kampala with its red dirt through Ankole that part of it was flat and then it would start with the rolling hills until we finally got to Western Uganda at the foothills of the Renzori. And that is where I grew up and I want to bring that to my story, to bring the landscape, to bring Uganda into my story, into this adventure of the future that I'm writing. I think it is so important to imagine ourselves in the future, that when future stories are told, that as Africans or Black people, we're not just the sidekicks that we are the main characters who are responsible for the good and who are responsible for the bad. We're the villains, we're the heroes. We are also the sidekicks. At its heart, a story of Uganda about Ugandans and also a story about us saving ourselves. I am consumed by thoughts of the future. I love reading articles about future casting. I want to bring all of that, to bring that understanding and that complexity of thought to the story because I think it is important for us to live in a place of hope where we have created a world in which human beings are thriving. They still have adventures and I don't think we're ever going to get rid of evil people or ever get rid of the need to have heroes, but I think we can fashion a better life for ourselves and I enjoy being in that state of mind. That's why I write this story as well. The last point is that I don't think it is possible for anyone, even those who have visited Africa, who have visited Uganda specifically, who have not spent more than a month there, and those who have not visited at all, to imagine the kind of life that a person can have there. I acknowledge I had privilege. I was able to go to some of the best schools in the country, and I lived a fairly sheltered life, uh, by my parents' design. So there were certain things that I didn't know that were happening. This is not to say that I wasn't exposed to poverty. My family was not rich by any means, but I had other privileges and I acknowledge them. So there's a certain kind of life that I lived that was full, that I felt was at the sort of cutting edge of where the world was. We didn't consider ourselves behind. We were where the rest of the world was and we just lived our lives that way, knowing that we could do anything. But the essential message that is given is that Africa is so far behind that when somebody says that they are coming from Uganda, there's a certain expectation of how this person's life has been. There's no way to imagine it. There's no way to compare it. And one of the things that I want to do with my story is just to bring a little bit of it. There's no way to imagine it because there's not enough information. To bring a little bit of it with every story that I write, with everything that I bring to people to understand what is happening with names, with food, with experience, with technological advancement, hopes and dreams, those kinds of things. That is why my work in progress is important for those five things. Creating adventures for young, voracious reading Wandunji to bring the gorgeousness of Uganda <laughs> to my story, to imagine ourselves in a future where we are saving our own damn selves, to innovate, and finally to show a life lived there is rich and whole and complete and advanced and beautiful. So that's why I'm writing this story. I know this has not told you much about the story that I am currently working on, but you'll have to find that out in bits and bobs as I do different videos. So make sure that you come back. If you have a YouTube channel and you are writing a story, even if you do not have a YouTube channel, but you are writing a story, why are you writing it? Why is the story that you're writing important? And I believe that everybody has a story to tell, a story that is waiting inside them to be told to everyone. So I'm not one of those who says, uh, not everybody can write. Everybody can write. Everybody should write. If you feel that you have a story on your heart, put it in a book. 
and share it with others. That is all I had for you today. Now, if you are watching this video and you've not participated in the Monday morning writings, please make sure that you join me on Monday morning at 9.30 a.m. where we sit down and we write for one solid hour. We will write and add to our work in progress or edit or create something else, whatever it is that you're doing. If you need an hour, come and join me on Monday morning at 9.30. And also on Wednesday, I host a prompt writing exercise where together we use a prompt to create a brand new story, to get creative juices flowing, to generate ideas for our work in progress. And I allow you to watch me work through writing some kind of flash fiction um, that I post on my Wattpad. So check in the links below in the description box. You can go and find some of those stories. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you on Monday morning, or if not, somewhere else on the internet. Bye!